I think for me, in video games, heroes are less iconic than the weapons that they're wielding. Growing up, I never wanted to be Master Chief, but goddamn, that energy sword sound still gives shivers down my spine. And it kind of makes sense if you think about it. We tend to identify as the hero, and the weapons filled a way better role as companions than the AI that would drive you off ledges or repeat the same dialogue. So when looking to add weapons to my game, I wanted to make sure they all have a distinct look and hopefully somewhat unique gameplay styles. And for sure, I'm never going to live up to like the Buster Sword or the Needler, but you know, fuck you, the Needler is, is top tier. I'm not going to compare myself to the fucking Needler, god damn it. So this is devlog number something or other, uh, adding weapons. Okay, first off, we have the revolver, and until now, this was the only gun actually in the game. Now, because of the mod system, every weapon has to be loosely based on the revolver. I can sort of bend or break some rules, but certain attributes just have to be there. Because I don't want some mods to be useless on some guns, stats like reload speed and range just have to make their way somewhere into the gun. So for the revolver, it's got 8 bullets, 2 damage per bullet, a nice medium range, and a pretty fast reload speed. In the same way, Overwatch used to balance new hero's power levels to Tracer, this will hopefully be my version of that, a nice base level. And I kind of like that it's really vanilla. For game design, it might be good to have this always as an option in the start of a run, in case the weapon you were given was kind of strange or not your cup of tea. And yeah, some of these guns do get a little weird. Uh, but not this next gun, the shotgun. I originally made this as a proof of concept that we could have different weapons and that the mods would transfer over. It's probably the most generic of the new guns, it just kind of looks like a basic two-barrel shotgun. Although, for gameplay purposes, I gave it four shots. Turns out, reloading every uh, two seconds is not fun. At first, I thought this would be a breeze to code. I already had bullets as an expert variable, so in Godot, I could just say this gun has five bullets when you fire it, five bullets will come out. And in the same vein, I have an accuracy stat on every gun, so I could just adjust that stat for the bullets to go in different directions. The problem I ran into, though, is something I didn't understand with Vector 2s. The way I learned to do bullet direction is to get the difference between the mouse's position and the gun's position when you go to fire. So I would normalize that vector and then apply the accuracy stat, which was just a range between negative 0.1 and 0.1. And even when I did it back in the day, I remember thinking like, this doesn't feel right. Like, this is not how math works. And it turns out uh, I was right in that I was wrong. So my accuracy stat for all my guns was only working if you shot in certain directions. And the shotgun was really good at demonstrating that. When it comes to the coding stuff, you guys understand this way better than I ever will, but my solution was to take this vector 2, convert it into an angle, and then add or subtract my accuracy there, convert it back to a vector 2, and then use that as my direction. I feel like there's gotta be better ways, and you guys are probably already typing some out, which I will totally read, but for my purposes, this is totally working. So getting back to the shotgun, after adding it in and having it now work properly, I also decided on some easy core visual things that I have to do for every gun. So going forward, every gun will have its own bullet, have its own muzzle flash, and have its own icon on the bottom left, oh, along with its own floor icon, because you have to be able to pick it up which i know that that sounds like a lot but that's by design because there's, there's gonna be like bugs in my game and then you guys are like can you fix them then i get to say no i'm swamped i gotta draw these uh gadgets and gizmos who's gonna draw those we, we don't want my game to, to fail get out of here okay next up for guns we have tea leaves so the concept for this weapon was to have a gun where there's less emphasis on the bullet hitting and more on where the bullet was going. So the bullet's damage itself is very low, it's like one fourth a revolver shot. And the shot speed is pretty slow, the range is not great, but hopefully all that is made up for by the AoE that's made from the leaves that spawn in its travel path. So visually, I could see changing some of these elements, but gameplay-wise, this felt fun right off the bat. I think it's a trade-off. Um, I'm lowering the skill ceiling of the bullet since you don't really need to hit anything, and the damage comes down with that, but to me, it feels fun to use. And there's something kind of satisfying with just littering the environment with this grass leaves. Also, I take the duration that the leaves stay alive and tie that to the range stat on tea leaves, so upgrading the range stat, which is usually not a great stat, now has a pretty big impact on how much damage you're doing. I think this is the first weapon I really tried to get creative and step out of the box on. I actually had no idea what the gun was going to do until I got it into Godot and was playing around with ideas. So when I get some time, I'm gonna go back and make it more than just green, but I, I definitely think I'm on the right track. Next up, we have a gun on naming Marrow. Marrow was a gun that I went back and forth with quite a bit. I had some vague ideas that maybe it shot a skull, and when that skull hit the enemy, it would splinter off. But then when I first started drawing the bullet for it, I knew it had to be kind of bright and stand out in the environment, not like a dark skull. So what was once a skull slowly turned into a spirit. Oh yeah, okay, so I'm realizing this now. I'm just ripping off Diablo 2. There's like a spell in Diablo 2 where he's like a fl flipendo and, and a skull comes out. And that skull thing locks onto an enemy and just tracks it down. Yeah, so I end up doing the same thing here. The bullet travels and has a normal range like every other bullet, but if anything gets within a certain radius of it, it becomes immortal and starts tracking the enemy down until it either collides or loses it. What are the trade-offs to get homing bullets? My first thought, let's take the damage down just a smidge, but I thought what would be more interesting is to take that bullet speed and range down quite a bit. That way it's more about positioning. You want to get close enough to shoot this bullet so that way it still finds the enemy. This one feels the most complete. From the art to the slight gameplay change, Marrow feels like it's in a pretty good spot. Plus, it, it just gets bonus points for me for looking kind of spooky. I don't even know how a gun with uh, three skulls on it should fire, but uh, there's like a cat summoning business meetings. Are we really going to start judging the realism now? Next up, 
is Gamut, a giant Gatling gun. So far for variants on guns, we play with the idea of limiting your ammo, your bullet damage, and your immediate range. So naturally, next on my list of things to throw a wrench into was shot speed. But I didn't want to give the player just some crazy shot speed, instead I want to settle on some kind of trade-off. And in my mind, Gatling guns come with that trade-off built in, or at least like the cartoonish version of a Gatling gun. So now, as long as you're holding fire, each bullet that comes out of Gamut increases its shot speed, which resets every time you let go or run out of ammo. There's also a maximum shot speed, because Godot just doesn't like it if you fucking have too much fun. Going with this trade-off, I also give you tons of ammo, like 30 shots. Just like all the other guns, I lower the damage down a little bit. I also give you a lot of range, which I didn't expect to do, but the reasoning is because you feel like you get yourself in a lot of trouble. You don't want to dodge, because then you'll reset your shooting. And to be honest with you, it's probably the gun that I'm the worst at, which makes me suspicious that it needs some more tuning. Now, because if I'm not good at it, it's gotta be the gun. It's not gonna be me, come on. That's ridiculous. The hardest part about the gun is that when you click, it doesn't fire, it's the click and hold, so it feels like those first couple shots always miss. And for Gamut, the shot speed stat is no longer how fast it shoots, but more how long it takes to get going. So maybe that feels right. The gun's a little clunky at first, but with a couple mods, it gets there. It's a tricky one to balance, so I'll keep my eyes on it. The last one for today is a gun I'm naming Racket. It's technically a shotgun, but it's firing in the way that Monstro's Tears would fire in Binding of Isaac. For bullets, I'm using these needles, which came from an enemy that I have that shoots them at a player. Initially, I had it so anything standing on a needle would take damage, but it honestly feels too much like tea leaves were already doing something a little like that. Plus, when you do that, you have to turn the damage down a lot and the tick rate down a lot. I wanted something a little more impactful. So for now, their functionality is more similar to proximity mines. You can still hit enemies with them and get a direct hit, but when you miss, they plant into the ground and enemies that walk over them trigger them. When I said earlier in the video that some guns are kind of weird and you might rather have the pistol over them, I was thinking of this gun. And I think I'm okay with that. Some guns that are intentionally low tier. It's by no means unusable, and I still think it does good damage, but I can imagine a player picking this gun and then losing, and then looking back and going, I'm not using Racket anymore, that gun's not good. And I think that's what a roguelike really is, using your knowledge. And speaking of knowledge, that wraps up this video, but if you want to watch more videos, like this one where I made a platformer in 48 hours without jumping, truly demonstrating my lack of knowledge for that genre, click here to check it out. Otherwise, thanks for watching guys, until next time, I'll see you later.